Hey everyone, it's a great day in sports analytics. I'm Victor Holman, sports analytics expert, and welcome to the sports analytics three minute drill, where I break down sports analytic methods and explain how they're being used today in the world of sports. Today I'm gonna to discuss frequency distributions, and more specifically, frequency distributions as a method of sports analytics. And remember, this method, like all others, can be applied to the Apple Sports Analytics model and Apple Sports Analytics framework in order to create the optimal scoring profiles for players and help coaches execute their game plans. And remember, if you find this video informative, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. Frequency distribution is a table that displays the frequency of various outcomes in a sample. Each entry in the table contains the frequency or count of the occurrences of values within a particular group or interval, and in this way, the table summarizes the distribution of values in the sample. Frequency distribution as a method of sports analytics. The use of data in sports analytics is becoming more and more popular as new methods are discovered each day. Today we will discuss the application of frequency distribution in sports analytics. In frequency distribution techniques, coaches and analysts employ the use of a frequency table to organize data. This table provides information such as number of games played, number of wins and losses, and scoring statistics. A frequency table is a typical win-loss chart. Why frequency distribution method? A frequency table provides information in a manner that can be easily read and understood. Users can simply read along the row for the desired information. How it works. In the frequency table, there are columns for number of wins and percentage of wins. The number of wins indicate the frequency of wins and the percentage of wins is a relative frequency. Relative frequency is calculated by dividing the total number of wins of a team, such as a football team, by the total number of games played. This way, discrepancies in the number of games played per team are not seen, thus making it easier to compare the teams in question. Frequency tables measure qualitative non-numerical or quantitative numerical data. Qualitative data, also called categorical data, are described as discrete variables. They have limited number of outcomes and cannot be ranked. Number of wins is discrete, meaning that they are whole numbers as you cannot have 3.5 or 1.5 wins. Qualitative variables can either be discrete or continuous. Continuous variables can take on any value, whole number or not. For example, the weight of a wrestler is a continuous variable as a wrestler can be 190 or 190.5 pounds. Frequency tables are usually viewed in the form of graphs called histograms. Histograms make it easier to compare disparate data and look for similar patterns. They can be presented by shapes, the normal or bell curve, like the shape of a bell. The normal curve is interpreted as what happens theoretically under ideal conditions. Therefore, no data will ever form an exact bell curve. Frequency tables or histograms can be compared by examining their symmetries. Normal distributions are completely symmetrical with the mode, or highest point, in the middle. When the highest point is facing the left side of the graph, the graph is said to be positively skewed, and if the highest point is towards the right side, it is negatively skewed. This method can also be used to compare the stats of a single player. For example, numbers of yards per pass for a quarterback can be listed by categories such as 0 to 5 yards, 6 to 10 yards, 10 to 15 yards, etc. The use of a histogram chart is also a helpful visual to better illustrate the strength and weaknesses of a team. In conclusion, frequency tables and histograms have proven to be a quick and convenient way for sports analysts and teams to compare individual players as well as teams. And that's frequency distributions applied in sports analytics in three minutes. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like to learn about a groundbreaking approach for leveraging analytics to get players to execute team strategy, check out my Agile Sports Analytics framework, software, and mobile app. 
If you'd like to know how your team or sports organization can leverage analytics across the seven key maturity areas and 26 best practices, check out my sports analytics maturity model and take the free comprehensive sports analytics maturity assessment. To learn more about this and 150 different sports analytic methods, purchase my book, Sports Analytics from A to Z, available on Amazon. And if you need help developing analytic models that create a competitive edge, contact me for a free consultation at www.agilesportsanalytics.com or call me at 888-861-8733.